Thanks, Beverly, for that introduction. And uh, thanks to all of the participants for uh, your interest in this work. Uh, as Beverly said, I'll introduce the poultry guidelines. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my colleagues in the technical advisory group. We had representation from the United States, Africa, uh, UK, Bangladesh, Brazil, Australia, and Japan, so uh, covering a wide range of uh, the globe as well as a wide range of production practices as highlighted by the, uh, the photos in this slide. I'd like to uh, give a, uh, highlight some of the things relevant to our guidance that uh, Pierre mentioned. We uh, largely have a consensus-driven document. Again, as Pierre mentioned, we have attempted to be pragmatic and yet flexible enough to handle the wide diversity of poultry production uh, processes in, uh, in the world and yet to be as prescriptive as possible uh, so that comparisons uh, can be made or supported as well as to support uh, continuous improvement because of uh, the same uh, methods being used uh, through time as people begin to improve uh, their production systems. It is, uh, as those of you have read it, you will clearly see, significantly based on extant standards, particularly the ISO standards, and yet we tried to refine it to target it to uh, the poultry sector. Uh, one of the annexes has a review of the existing studies and standards uh, where the commonalities and differences uh, are discussed, uh, and this formed the basis of our, uh, of our guidance. So the questions that drove the development of the methodology, beginning with how complex should the work be, uh, as you have noticed, it is a detailed and attributional approach, which is defined by the methodology. Uh, also important is to define the goal and scope, to put some boundaries around goal and scope definition, so what should be the system boundary and functional units. Uh, the perennial problem in allocation, uh, in LCA of allocation is also addressed, uh, I think, quite thoroughly in uh, all of the guidelines. One point, uh, Harkening back to what Pierre mentioned with regard to impact categories is that, of course, uh, this document really focuses only on greenhouse gases and fossil energy demand. And so uh, it, it's important to recognize that that is a, a limitation of our guidance as it stands today. But again, as Pierre mentioned, the intent is to expand it to additional impact categories in the future. So looking at the goal and scope definition, we have recommended two system boundary choices, uh, cradle to farm gate or cradle to processing gate. I'll talk about each of those a little bit more. Uh, the animals and systems that we have tried to cover in this guidance are broilers, layers, and breeders, and the species chicken and turkey only. So we uh, recognize that there are other poultry species uh, particularly uh, duck uh, in Asia, which are quite important, but there are not specific guidances, guidelines given in our document for those. We have also attempted, as Pierre mentioned, to keep a, uh, enough flexibility so that the guidelines can be applied from backyard, uh, multi-animal species systems, through large-scale commercial operations that would be common in the developed uh, or, or modern production systems. The products covered uh, meat, including edible offal, uh, and in some cases, uh, delicacies such as uh, chicken feet or perhaps uh, bones if they're consumed in, uh, in certain cultures. Egg products, uh, which includes both uh, dried uh, and liquid products, and other co-products from the processing facility uh, of rendering, uh, including, for example, uh, bone meal, blood meal, uh, feather meal, and other uh, potential co-products uh, from the meat processing. The system boundary, more specifically, is uh, cradle, meaning extraction from nature, as the uh, 
base background processes that must be included. In the poultry sector specifically, the existing study suggested that uh, including the breeding stock for broilers and layers going back to the great grandparent level contributes approximately five to perhaps seven or eight percent of the supply chain uh, greenhouse gas emissions and we felt that it was important thus to include uh, the great grandparent breeding stock all the way through uh, to the production of the animals. The downstream boundary as I mentioned could either be the farm gate at which case the functional unit should be a live animal or the manufacturer's loading dock explicitly excluding uh, post manufacturing uh, supply chain stages. Uh, the reason for that was uh, we felt a lack of available data as well as the absence of retail stakeholders in our process. Uh, in addition, the complexity around frozen meals, for example, as a uh, additional processing uh, process product uh, was beyond what we felt was a reasonable scope. The an important thing about this choice of system boundary is that virtually all systems from, from backyard systems through, through commercial large scale systems pass through the point of a, uh, a hot carcass at some point. And so having that as a common boundary point enables some comparability and consistency across different practices. The system boundary diagram shown here uh, highlights the, the background and foreground processes. So uh, back, oh, didn't mean to do that. How do I move my arrow here? Oh, I just so, so inputs, this would be considered primarily background information. Uh, if the uh, system under study is egg production at the farm gate, then the breeding could be considered a background uh, production process and uh, primary data wouldn't be needed. Uh, whereas if processing is considered, uh, farm, the processor gate is considered to be the system boundary, then the egg production and processing would be considered foreground processes. These would be considered background processes. Byproduct management, of course, is relevant for all systems. Turning to the question of the functional unit, we have chosen uh, that it should be something like 1,000 kilograms of carcass, edible carcass or egg at the processor gate. Uh, and as I've mentioned in some uh, cultures, the uh, delicacies, for example, chicken feet are consumed and so the functional unit should include uh, those components. There are some additional specifications around the uh, functional unit that we think are important, uh, for example, specifying not just the uh, carcass weight but also the edible yield of the hot carcass so that uh, subsequent harmonization of studies is more feasible. That's the reason for these additional qualifying characteristics. Turning to multifunctional processes and allocation, the poultry sector is relatively simple, certainly compared to uh, the small ruminants with regard to multifunctional processes. Primarily, if uh, in small systems there may be multiple animal species, we recommend a system uh, separation, uh, perhaps based on biophysical growth uh, requirements. With regard to the background breeding or layer systems, uh, spent breeders or layers, we recommend a system expansion approach uh, by substituting a relevant uh, broiler. Uh, we can have some discussion about uh, the, the decision to recommend substitution by a broiler uh, during the Q&A. <clears throat> At processing, we do not differentiate between different cuts of meat. All of the edible portion is uh, allocated against all of the other co-products by an economic allocation and we can discuss uh, in the Q&A uh, the rationale for that decision as well, but it's an important point. So uh, my final slide then, talking uh, to the people who will hopefully be adopting these guidelines. Uh, we do have a diversity of production systems globally in the poultry sector. Uh, 
Uh, and as we developed this document, we found that there was often difficulty in uh, communicating because of the terminology. Uh, we have thus created a, a glossary, and we'd like to recommend that uh, in uh, producing your documents based on this guidance, that you use those definitions so that uh, everyone who reads them will have a clear understanding of the meanings uh, of, of all of the things that are discussed. As I mentioned, we don't cover all of the poultry species, and so some adaptation uh, may be necessary. One of the examples in the document uh, is uh, regarding the co-production of uh, duck and tilapia, which would, of course, require some uh, additional uh, work beyond what we have provided in this document. Uh, finally, uh, one point regarding the availability of default values in the guidance documents. We intentionally did not include a large number of default values, uh, even though data availability uh, for some regions uh, and for small-scale production may be problematic. Uh, the reason that default values were not included is that we felt it important that primary data be collected uh, in as many cases as possible and that if default values were available, then uh, we wouldn't be making uh, good analyses. Okay, I'm up uh, from time, so thank you.